Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be recapping the election. We'll also be talking about an airport shut down by a snow globe. And we'll be discussing a baby that was seized in Pennsylvania over a poppy seed bagel. That plus a whole lot more coming up tonight on this episode of Free Minds TV. Welcome to episode 181 now of Free Minds Ooh. TV. Um, I think we're up to episode 181. Yeah. Last year, yeah, yeah. Last year last was 180. Yep, and so that's that, last week was 180. Yeah, last week we said it was, was like a school year, so I think you know if we had one show for every day of the school. All right, so welcome to episode 181 of Free Minds TV. As always, it is Toby here with you and Nick. All right, let's get right into it, Nick. We've got a lot to talk about today. We are going to be talking about. Um, a baby who was seized because the mother ate a poppy seed bagel, which caused a drug test to show up positive. We'll be getting into those details um, in the second half of the show as well as uh, this camera. Cameras have been going up all over the place in big cities. Police departments putting up he these huge camera networks. Um, and there's one big city in New Orleans, in fact, that is getting rid of their camera system because, well... They're just finding that it doesn't do anything to deter crime, something we've been preaching on the show for years. But first, we've got to focus on a couple of things. Number one, we are going to be getting into the elections, but first I wanted to start off with something kind of more exciting uh, to talk about, something ridiculous, because we like to comb the internet for uh, areas where gov the government does uh, ridiculous things and point out... Uh, it makes it easier to prove our point. It does. It, um, they make it very easy for us. Sometimes. Exactly, because they're always doing silly things, so I wanted to captivate the audience first by talking about government security and airports. A snow globe forces the evacuation at Brady Airport. Yes, uh, that's right, folks, a snow globe. State police say a harmless snow globe in a carry-on bag caused a partial evacuation at Bradley, uh, Bradley, Bradley International Airport. State Police Lieutenant Paul Vance says a Transportation Security Administration worker st uh, spotted something that looked suspicious while screening bags and alerted state police shortly thereafter. Vance says Terminal A was evacuated for a precaution, but was reopened about 45 minutes later after authorities determined that the snow globe did not contain any explosives and was, in fact, just a harmless snow globe. Now, Nick. Should we not be bringing snow globes on planes now, too? Are they the next razor blade or lighter or whatever it is? I mean... We've, we've if they applied a lot of the airport security rules to life in general, there would be it would just be crippling. I mean, it would be impossible to enforce the rules. And when you think about it, at this point, isn't it just as likely? And we have had terrorists attempt to target commercial flights sure. since September 11th. So sure. it's, I guess it has proved somewhat untrue, the idea that they'll probably attack something else besides airplanes next, because they have gone back to commercial airliners time and again, because it's a good way to kill a lot of people relatively easily. I mean, you don't need a huge bomb and you can kill a couple hundred people at a time. You'd need a lot more explosives and probably more expertise to do sure, something sure. a different way. But that doesn't mean that they aren't looking at attacking the United States or any other Western nation in another way. I mean, well, a, lot like, of, a, lot of the, a lot of the plots that have come up over the last couple of years have not involved commercial airliners at all. So sure. are we going to have the TSA take over the highways, state highways. That's a very good point, states. Nick. And I, I think it's a it's a point to be made that uh, we're not protected from terrorists in, in the airport or on an airplane or any part of life. I mean, the government's own tests of their systems, where bombs are screened through, and um, they're 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 screening to see if um, a bomb will uh, be caught by the TSA, the Security Administration, and time and time again they show that no, they will not. Uh, over 50% of the time, uh, bombs, knives, um, the, these screening programs, they get through. So, no, you're not secure uh, in an airport, and then if you were to take that outside, um, the water supply, trucking company, trains, whatever it may be, there's really almost no security out there at all. There's a great illusion of security. There's camera systems everywhere, and this story we'll be getting into in the second half of tonight's show will paint a picture of why that doesn't make us more secure. Um, there is definitely police officers everywhere. They're, they're lining the streets more and more, it seems. Um, there's definitely this huge illusion of security, 
but is it actually making us safer? And I think it's a good point, Nick, to say, well, what's to stop them from attacking the subway or a train or the water supply or the power grid or just how about a regular trucking company, whatever it is, uh, driving a well, giant 18 wheeler into a crowded building, what it, or packing it with explosives and driving it into a yeah. building and letting it explode. I mean, there's so many different avenues that terrorists could go down. Are we just going to be handing over more of our liberties and saying, do more to search us, do more to keep us safe. Right, and do it everywhere. That doesn't even work. And right. so then we're I mean, evacuating airports for snow globes. Right. I mean, if you look at the number of civil liberties that have been surrendered and the amount of money that's been spent combating a threat as relatively small as terrorism, and to those of you who think that's being dismissive, well, how many Americans died last year because of terrorism and how many died because of heart disease? And you might say, well, we aren't seeing terrorist attacks with the same frequency that we would if we didn't have all the security. Well, even if you had a death toll equivalent to, say, three 9-11s a year, I'm not saying that's something you want to put up with, but still far more Americans are going to die in auto accidents or sure. from heart disease well, or that's, from cancer that's another good point, than they Nick. are going to die from terrorism. What even if? if you're having three 9-11s every single year. Oh, more than three. I, I mean... If, but we don't say that the government should be able to completely If you're having a couple a go, month, right. Nick, three a month but would be having less. Still, most people, unless you've completely gone over to the dark side and just believe in some kind of a, you know... Orwellian. Just Orwellian, super controlling government, most people would agree that well, it wouldn't be appropriate to let the government just control our whole lives and what we eat and, and force us to exercise, even though you save a lot more lives than could even really potentially be taken by terrorism. Sure, and how much money are we wasting? So let's, let's be realistic about it. What is the government's job um, to protect society? Uh, personally, I think that what we usually say on here is it's, that's not the government's job. That's... Um, your job to protect yourself and my job to protect ourselves and our neighbors and all that stuff. The government. Well, the government. I, I think there is a role for government playing a role, say, defending you from foreign governments. Sure, but that's murders. not what we're talking about necessarily. And let's face it, Nick, they don't stop murderers. They clean up the mess after murderers. And Largely the Supreme they do. Court has ruled that there's no. There's not, right. They, they, there's no liability sure. there that they have to stop. Crime okay. Before it well, let's just say we are in the business of this because that's what we are. The government is in the business of protecting protecting society from itself, um, whether it be health care or terrorists or um, anti-smoking campaigns or uh, the drug companies, um, whatever, whatever they're doing, they're definitely in that job. So how much money are they supposed to spend to save a life? Because that's what it comes down to, Nick, eventually, is, is tax dollars and what right. it's worth. And, well, and you'll hear and if it saves even one life, then it's worth it, but okay. it's not. That's, right. uh, you're, that's, yeah, that's an economic, I mean, if you're looking at it in economics terms, that's just there's a limited amount of resources right, that's and where you're going to be The money them. that you're taking to pay for these thousands standing around in the TSA and all these other security measures, all this money that's being taxed and borrowed out of the productive sector of the American economy, those are jobs that aren't being created, new products being created that will potentially, if you're looking at things like the healthcare field or just things that generally improve quality of life, things that could extend everybody's lifespan and, and improve your quality of life. And of course, quality of life suffers just because the economy is that much poorer. Yeah. The, nothing is really produced by all of this security theater that's taking place. Short of a few jobs for the right. security I mean, agents. There are jobs, themselves. but nothing, nothing of real value in terms of goods and services is really being produced. You can argue that security is a necessary service, but when you look at the amount of overkill taking place, just the amount of resources being dumped at things that don't really make us any more secure, then it's not even really providing security. It's not doing anything except making people's lives more difficult for the most part and providing an illusion of security. Now, what if instead of spending all this money to fight terrorists and these foreign wars and the TSA, like trillions of dollars, like literally trillions of dollars we're talking about here, what if they did something uh, revolutionary like uh, let the people keep their tax dollars instead or even if they put it towards something else. Imagine if they had spent several trillion dollars last year on um, making automobiles more safe. Just for example, we're talking about the government spending money here, and I'm not saying that the, that's the government's job. I don't think that that's what they should be doing. But just imagine if they went and tried to find a cure for AIDS or something and used $2 trillion in the last year and all the resources they used to fight these terrorists that only cost a few thousand American lives be, instead of 
millions and millions that are dying from heart disease or cancer or, or AIDS or automobile accidents, which are only in the tens of thousands. But, you know, it's... All together, those things add up to many millions. Many people. millions of people dying, and instead we're spending trillions of dollars off a few thousand people dying. It doesn't really make much sense there. No. I mean, I get, I get the terrorism's much more emotional because it's on TV and it's very gripping, but if you well, essentially put it what you're down doing, when you numbers, look at it in those economic terms, what you're doing is you're saying that it, it's actually more acceptable to take this money away from other things that it could be spent on. I'm not saying that it would necessarily be spent on finding these cures. But what you're saying is it's a higher priority to stop terrorist attacks and to let more people die in, yes. in, the, in the net total is right. really what you're saying. It's, if the priority was really on saving as many Americans from death as possible, then they would just invest it in things like finding a cure for heart disease and cancer. And I'm sure even if the government did that, it, those efforts would be very inefficient because they would be government led. Sure. So we're not advocating that, but no. it's just making the point that, it's, that it's not really not about what they're saving trying to do. Lives. It, if you look at where the numbers really lead to, it's government contracts, it's control, it's power. And so I think that's what we really need to be looking at here because it's not the government's job to protect us. They know that. They're explicit with that. That's not what they're trying to do. It may be the illusion of what it looks like they're doing, but that's not what they're trying to do. Instead, if you really follow the numbers, the numbers are going to create jobs, create contracts, create power systems. And the rest systems. Americans who aren't terrorists at all. But that's a they job, might, Nick. Might, that's right. somebody's job, and that's but a huge that, multi-billion dollar contract. You have to remember that the, the police state apparatus is being built up, whether it's camera networks or the TSA. Sure. Largely, in, in real practice, what it's being used to do is it's being used to target people for relatively petty offenses, relatively small things, or victimless crimes. I'm sure a lot more people are being busted for drug possession or possession of other contraband by the TSA, things like copyrighted music. That's happening now when they check mm -hmm. laptops. People are getting in trouble for that because they'll actually make sure there's no terrorist information on the laptops when they check them. They do this at the border, too. No terrorist and then you get findings, busted, but like, oh, look, you have an illegal right, you, MP3. Right. Or potentially right. illegal MP3. It's, very it's, it's difficult hard to, prove, to track. Right, it's very difficult to prove. But, but chances are you didn't buy a billion dollars worth of music, which in some cases... <laughs> right, right. I mean, you, you have 10,000 songs and you're supposed to pay a, few, a couple dollars for each one. Um, right, right. And so, so, I mean, largely that's what this is doing. It's being used against the American people in curtailing their, their rights as opposed to actually keeping yeah. them safe from terrorists. While making some people very... So if you look at... Wealthy. Right, if you do a cost-benefit, not really worth it, is it? Anyways. Look at it rationally. Unless that's what you want. Right, and that's what some people safer. do want. Some people do politicians just want mostly. Politicians, they love that power, and people with these government contracts are making billions of dollars off of it. And, and of course, it does make some people feel safer to have a security guard standing around every corner and pulling over the scary guy and patting him down a few times, even though uh, chances are it's not doing a thing. I mean, if a real terrorist wanted to do something, there's pretty easy. Luckily, most terrorists are stupid, very, very stupid. Um, as we've seen in the foiled terrorist uh, uh, plots, it, it, it's not a lot of sophistication going on there. But, I mean, some people do like the, the security theater. It makes them feel good. Old ladies, I think, Nick. Is it worth it? Billions of dollars? Probably not. Politicians are going to continue to pursue that because it gives them more control. It makes them look good because whether they're keeping you safe or not, at least they can say that, look, we're doing this and it's keeping you safe. Plus, Even if it's, it's really not. patriotism. Stand behind it. Speaking, Speaking of, of politicians, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got... The election just took place yesterday because we recorded this on Wednesday. Did we win, Nick? Did we win? I don't know. I don't know who we are. If you're talking about people who care about limited government and a lot more freedom, not really. Well, I don't think we really did. Were those people running? No. I mean, oh. it, well, yes. I mean, in New Hampshire, there were there were a couple state races where there there were um, some pretty good pro liberty candidates running that I actually have some faith in. On the federal level, mm, not so much. Uh, Rand Paul, who we've talked about on the show, he did end up winning in Kentucky, so he's going to be U.S. Senator for Kentucky. I'm not sure whether I'm going to like him as a politician or not. I guess. Oh, based on some of the things, based on the things he said, I'm very politician. skeptical. He went politician on us, not like his dad, Ron Paul, who's he's pretty principled. I don't think he, he stuck by his principles. And if you don't stick by your principles in the campaign, how are you going to stick by them right. in Washington, where there's an immense amount of pressure to just water sure. down your message, compromise? Well, see, I could be wrong, but I have almost no hope. I have almost no hope, but on the other hand, I guess, even though I've been skeptical since he's been running, I guess I'll wait till he starts voting for things that I don't like. 
until I. But even if that's only him. one, what's that going to make? Let's say he was pr completely pro liberty and he was he was the man. Right, and one guy in the Senate. Ooh, -hoo. Ooh. yeah. Please. So I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of hope in Washington D.C. And it's also quick to point be quick to point out that even those of you who think that the Republicans are going to do a better job than the Democrats of say reducing deficits, letting you keep more of the money you earn, and getting government off your back. And they have a terrible track record of this. Didn't happen in 94 when they, when they made that. I think it was the contract with America was the first one. And then it didn't happen during the Bush administration. Government grew more quickly, even non-defense spending, even if you take the wars out of it. And I don't know why you would, because you still have to pay for the wars. It's not like they don't count. But even if you do take the wars out of it, non-defense spending grew more quickly during the Bush administration than it did during the Clinton administration. And you have to remember, even if you think that, well, that's all changed, and this time things are going to be different, because that's what people always seem to say, this time things are going to be different, well, you have to remember the Republicans now control the U.S. House, they don't control the Senate, and they don't control the presidency. It's a, they're not going to repeal the health care bill. They're not going to repeal anything the president really cares about. Even if they control both houses, they need a veto-proof override to do that. So a lot of people are talking about this like, oh, now good things are going to happen. No. Government's going to continue to grow. Maybe they put one or two pe people who were elected this year into Washington that will actually work for small government in some kind of a principal way. Even that, I'm somewhat skeptical of. But I'll be an optimist and say maybe two or three of the people who are elected will work for liberty in a principal way. And the other 430-something are going to work against it very strongly. Yeah. So I don't expect anything to change in a positive way on the federal level. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure what this is going to mean for the state, in the state of New Hampshire where we're broadcasting from because there's been some shakeup with like the state Senate's gone Republican, the state House shifted heavily Republican. Is it going to make a difference? Is that going to be better for freedom in New Hampshire? I don't know. It's going to depend on which Republicans were elected. Yeah. It doesn't really, you can't, it's, it's so tough to, how can you judge on what, what direction something's going to go based on R or a D? I, I mean. Well, it's so amorphous. I mean, the parties aren't that dissimilar right. for the most part, if you take them as a whole. And they're both basically sort of centrist. One's a little to the left, one's a little to the right. Big government parties. And uh, I don't think that this election. I don't is think it really makes much. much of a difference. The one thing I d was very disappointed on in Prop 19 over in California, legalizing marijuana, failed. So I mean, not too surprised. We I think we were talking about how we we weren't. We thought that there may be some heat against it. Uh, the especially in the weeks leading up to it, there was a lot of anti-government propaganda uh, talking about it. So. Um, what are you going to do? I guess we'll still continue to have the same this, old bad policy for years. Well, we, you know, we have come. said this every election. And if you don't believe us, you can actually go back in our archives on the website. Yeah, they're all up there. .com, and you can, you can look. We've said this when Obama was elected. Things aren't going to get better. The wars are not going to just come to a screeching halt. They haven't. And when just every election, I think the midterms, were we doing this the midterms before that? We've always been doing the show. We've been, do been doing We haven't always like been doing the show. Year now. Oh, wait. We're so, in our 06, fifth year. So 06 midterms, we said the same thing, though. Yeah. And that was back during the Bush administration. Oh, some Republicans got kicked out. Oh, so now the Democrats are in control of the Congress and they're going to do wonderful things. Didn't happen then. When was the last time it happened? It's, it's just, I, I don't have a bigger. whole. I mean, I, I, I think there's some positive things can, and, and hopefully, you know, I'm somewhat optimistic on the state level in New Hampshire specifically because we have a large pro-liberty activist community in the state. But when you're dealing with most other states and you're dealing with the federal government, there is no real pro-liberty activism that's taking place in any kind of a cohesive way where it's actually going to make a difference. And you have so little actual representation. In the state the size of California, California is bigger than most countries. So the amount of impact that one individual or a group of 20 or 30 dedicated people can have in a state like California, it's insignificant compared to what you could do here in a state like New Hampshire. So, I mean, there are definitely some areas where I think you can make a difference on the state and the local level, but once you start dealing with these higher offices, it's useless. I, I think, they're just, so, I think it's, they're just part of a system that's basically been designed to keep professional politicians in charge sure. so that they can continue funneling money to their friends, and that's not I don't think that's a, a, a left-wing thing to say or a politically slanted thing to say. It's what happens. We have politicians that are elected. They're supported by really rich and influential people. 
so that those really rich and influential people can get more rich and influential. And unfortunately, a lot of the time, they're not even based out of um, the United States. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> I mean, I mean, rich and influential people from China funneling money into New Hampshire elections to make sure that a certain I don't know if China parties, cares about New Hampshire, yeah. But, well, it's senator. There's a senator. So people like those senators. It's just funneling yeah, money in. That's foreign, true. On the foreign the investors. Races, yeah. Because, right, on the federal level, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's an international campaign to get certain American leaders that supposedly will represent you and I. I mean, that's why... I, I, we didn't talk much about the election uh, coming up here because, as we said, it didn't much matter. So let's stop right. talking about it now. <laughs> we just <laughs> had to put idea. it down. We had to like we had to say something <laughs> after. So right, because it's a big event. Back if we just archives. ignored it, people would be like, "Why aren't they talking about the election?" Right, so and we it's want just depressing. And we need certain markers to talk about it a little bit so that we can say in six months when we're doing the show and oh, we can we say, "Well, we told you so." We can say, "No, we we did." Uh, the day after the elections when we're recording this, nothing's going to change except the government's going to get bigger and we're going to be frustrated in two more years and everyone's going to still hate the But the, the map will be the red. There'll be more red on the map yeah. when you're watching CNN and, you, and you're watching yeah. the next, next bunch of scumbags that are going to take control and screw you some more. Well, the map will be more red than blue. And then you'll probably be pissed at the Republicans by that point. So I wouldn't be surprised. They if prevented the these important things from being passed. Yeah, hey, hey, the, uh, the American people are—they are really—they are, really, are really angry. I've called them dumb before, Nick. No, but the, you've I, gotten mad at me for it. Not our viewers, of course, but the rest of those Americans who are so easily forget their it's, short-term it's sort of, memory. I don't problems. know if I'd say stupidity, but I'd say there's—it's naive. Okay, there's executive think. skill uh, dysfunction. There's some kind. Was this a third election loss. in a row that they've switched parties in control because they're angry? But all they do is they go back to the other party, yeah. and they're not any different. Yeah. Well, there we go. We've said it now. Nothing will change except the government will continue to grow, maybe in a different direction. It might grow, it might grow a hair more slowly or a hair more quickly. Yeah. Doesn't really or a hair in another direction. But the end right. goal will, the end result will be the same. We'll have a bigger behemoth government that will rack up the debt at the price of all us Americans. All right, Nick. Moving right along, we've got a couple more stories we can touch on here without much time, um, but we did plug them, so we should get into them. The first one coming from New Orleans, where Mayor Mitch Alandru wants to dump the city's crime cameras. Yes, the cameras have been up for uh, seven years now in New Orleans and have yielded only six indictments. Three for crimes caught on video and three for bribes and kickbacks. A vendor is accused of paying a former city official to sell the camera to City Hall. <laughs> So that's what the camera system. So only three in seven years, only three crimes have been caught in tape. Of course, three more because three of were the, caused by the camera problem. So it's a wash. Right. It's it's a complete wash here, um, and of course the camera systems have cost the city. Uh, let's see, da, 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 well over ten million dollars, and have failed time and time again to solve any crimes, including murders caught on tape. Um, they're just a or quality, or they're not maintained right, or and it, This it, isn't unique to New Orleans. This happens in the UK. Crime rates didn't go down after no. they started expanding the camera system. And they put, we, we sort of segued from terrorism. You mentioned this when we were talking about the security theater around terrorism, but that's how it started in the UK. When the IRA was bombing London, they created this ring of steel, and now it's spread out over most of the UK. It's not just London, but it, it didn't stop the IRA. They didn't go away. And it, well, they have now, for the most part, but it, for different reasons. And it, it hasn't made anybody safer. It hasn't held down crime rates. Crime rates have gone up. Taking everyone's guns away didn't hold down crime rates. Crime rates went up. It just makes me feel watched. That's all. It makes me feel uncomfortable. This story and others we've reported on like it make me feel a little bit better because there's no one watching these cameras, Nick. Half the time the cameras don't even work. Not like work. Chicago. All it is. They've got <laughs> men in control rooms watching you. Really, do they, they do. really? Yeah, but how many are they actually watching? What right. this story I mean, is pointing out, Nick, for the most part, what most of these camera systems are, are ways for camera salesmen and contractors out there to make a lot of money. Millions of dollars, and on a national level, billions and billions of dollars of your tax dollars going to put up camera systems that aren't going to stop crime, um, or at least there's a very uh, low diminishing returns there, a high diminishing returns. It's costing a whole lot of money to solve barely any crimes. So, I mean, for the most part, as we said, it causes security theater, makes me feel uncomfortable, but in reality, doesn't do much. All right, Nick, we do need to move on. We said we'd talk about it real quick. A parent losing their child at birth because, as a routine blood test, she tested positive for a drug 
that she's claiming was actually from a poppy seed bagel? Yep. Uh, this story is coming from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A civil rights lawsuit was filed Thursday on behalf of a Newcastle, Pennsylvania mother who had her baby taken away after a bagel with poppy seeds skewed the results of a drug test. Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Mort said she tested positive for drugs after delivering her child because she ate a poppy seed bagel before giving birth. Um, apparently, three days after the child was born, um, at Jameson Hospital, uh, what do they call it, Ch Children and Youth Services is what they call it in Pennsylvania, came and took the baby away. The baby was away from the family for five days, but was returned after they couldn't come up with any additional evidence that the mother had used illegal drugs. Um, and it looks like, at this point, the baby's been returned. Um, so she's suing, it looks like she's suing the state for this whole affair. Which, and, and if you're doubting her claim and saying, yeah, right, there's, it's probably a pretty solid case. I'm going to guess. I don't know the details of the case. But it's usually a pretty solid case if you're trying to sue because the ACLU probably believes that they can at least show by a preponderance of the evidence that it was, in fact, a poppy seed bagel and well, the state did actually do You should be able to test the wrong. baby to see if it had those effects, too. But... That aside, I just want to talk about automatically drug testing parents of newborns. Now, yes, it's horrible to use substances while you're pregnant. I mean, it, 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 I can see it being construed as child abuse. But here's the problem, Nick. These drug tests they're using, they are not infallible. In fact, they have an error rate, a lot of them, somewhere around 1%. So that means you're testing 100 mothers. Well, you have 100 false positives and you're going to take away a hundred, I, I mean, after a uh, hundred babies here, every hundred, you're just going to take away the baby because false positives are okay in that sense? Is that a, a something know. that we're willing to Apparently do? Apparently the Pennsylvania House thinks yes. Uh, Pencil the reason they can do this is that Pennsylvania House Bill two, uh, 2760 that passed three years ago allows hospitals to test a mother's blood. There's false positives all the time, though, Nick. There's false yeah, positives. They, the, the, the it depends. Drug different tests and right, different sure. drugs have different rates. Right. But there are false positives. So what is, are you willing to say? How many babies can be taken away when they shouldn't be, when it's just a false positive, like a poppy seed bagel or an error in the, in the test? Whatever it is, the companies that create these drug tests admit it. They say there's false positives. And you're willing to say, yes, out of every 10,000 babies we have in this state, we're going to be lo uh, taking away about 100 of them, uh, and that's worth it to protect the others. It just seems... Right, and, and uh, while, while you're ready to point out that it's horrible to use substances when you're pregnant, yes. there's also a matter of degrees there, too, because if you smoke one cigarette when you're pregnant, is that grounds to take a child away? So Two, you... three, four? I mean, it's, there's, there's a gray scale there, and when you have a law like this, it doesn't really recognize the gray scale necessarily, and it doesn't really recognize whether harm was done to the child, which is difficult to it ascertain. Is. It's almost it's impossible. because how do you, you're right. I mean, Unless you're going to go years down the line. Anyways, we're out of time tonight. If you have a different thought or opinion on this, you can log on to our website, freemindstv.com. From there, there's a contact button, easiest way to contact us. Um, until next week, it's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good one.